doing a quad copter one on one here. Before we get started, let's get today's shout out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Dick Van Campen. Dick Van Campen was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, quad copter one on one here with a review of a neat new transmitter. This is the Jumper T16 transmitter with OpenTX Jumper TX support. Now, um, TNSG Jumper, Jumper actually is the name of the company, uh, years, several years ago came out with this little model here. This is the original T8SG Jumper. This was the first multi-protocol transmitter that was already ready to go out of the box that could fly just about any particular drone or airplane that you wanted. Now, although this was is very capable, I still got mine, I like it. <laughs> it's a very capable little transmitter. Um, some people didn't like it because it felt kind of toyish. Uh, you know, I don't see the toyishness about it, but some people didn't like it, didn't like the feel of it. And with that in mind, um, T8SG, or Jumper went out and redesigned the T8SG and came out with this model, the T8SG Plus. Now, the T8SG Plus is available in three different versions, T8SG Plus uh, Lite version, which only worked with several different multi-protocols. Then there was the uh, T8SG uh, uh, T8SG Plus normal model, which came with regular gimbals, and then there was the T8SG uh, Plus V2, which came with these uh, Hall Effect gimbals. Now, this was a nice transmitter, and it still is. I, this is actually my favorite transmitter that I still use to this day. It meets all the needs that I have, okay? But some people want it more, okay? They, and some people didn't like that this used deviation firmware, um, they prefer to use OpenTX firmware. People like that prefer to use like the Tyrannus. Now the Tyrannus is another uh, transmitter that has capability if you put in a external module into the back here, and then you can also use this as a multi-protocol transmitter too to fly all your different drones and aircraft with their different flight protocols. Um, very capable transmitter uses OpenTX, but very expensive transmitter at the same time okay this is not cheap folks and notice it's pretty big and bulky people like some people like that big bulkiness now the first thing that uh, jumper came out with that uh, to try to approach the open TX version is they, they came out with a T12 model this is the jumper T12 which does use open TX okay originally the, the original version See, the original version had OpenTX installed on it. However, I guess Jumper got into an argument there, and I'm not going to get into that with the people of, at OpenTX. So they came out with their own fork of the OpenTX firmware, and they called it uh, Jumper TX. Welcome to Jumper TX. Now, this particular mod. Yeah, let's turn that off. Now, although this model here uses OpenTX or Jumper TX both, it can use either. Uh, a lot of people did not like this one either because they said, oh, it seems too toyish. <laughs> they want that big heavy transmitter. And for those people, that's what came, they, that's what Jumper came out with. They came out with the T16. This one is a brand new transmitter, just came out. It also, just like the T12, has an external JP4 and one module, their Jumper JP4 and one module, that multi-protocol module that um, can transmit just about any you know any different protocol for RC aircraft now the original jumpers had that already installed inside okay it was it there was no external module that you could plug or change in these uh, original TASGs because again well this one you could I take that back I forgot about the, <laughs> the V2 um, it can use external modules, so I take that back. Never mind what I said there. But although this one does have a built-in module, but you can also use external modules with it. This one alone does not, nor does this one. These, you have to use external modules only. And they do come with the external module already installed, already to go, um, ready to go out of the box, in effect. So you don't need to worry about that. Now, what's the difference between this one and the previous T12? Now... The previous T12 is a 12 channel, okay? That means it, this one has uh, four three position switches, two two position switches, and si two side wheels on it for control, along with uh, pitch roll and yaw, which comes up to a total of 16 channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, I mean 12 channels, 12 channels on this one. The T16, as you might guess, means this has 16 channels of control. Four channels here on pitch or throttle, yaw, pitch and roll. Uh, four 
two, three, four, or actually six, six three position switches. Okay, these two are also three position switches. Two two position switches. Two slide switches on the side that are taking place of the scroll wheels. And you got two front uh, rheostat controls for a total of 16 channels. Plus, you get these little buttons here. Now, what are these little buttons for on the front? These are for uh, flight control boards like APM and Pixhawk, where uh, autopilot flight control boards, programmable flight control boards, uh, you can use these with those. If you want to set, you know, your flight plan number one, you press that button to execute flight plan number one, program flight plan number one, or or if you've got another program flight plan, you can set press that button or to cancel the flight plan. In, in other words, you can program these buttons in those programmable flight control boards to do use these buttons with that. Okay. Now let's go over, again, I mentioned it has JP4 in one module. This is very capable. Lots of different protocols on here, more than you probably ever need. <laughs> However, uh, again, if you're not satisfied with this, you can swap these out. You know, this is also like TBS Crossfire compliant or cap compatible. You can use this with TBS Crossfire module, you know, install that in there and run that too with this particular transmitter if you wish. But let's go over the menus and the other features of this particular transmitter. Now notice this. It's got a big bright LCD screen. As compared to all the others, you know, there's just little LCD screens, uh, two, uh, two color, uh, black and white, or in the case of that one, I believe it was orange and black <laughs> uh, screen. This one is actually a full color screen. Uh, very colorful, um, very uh, big. <laughs> You can easily see this out in the field. Let's go over some of the features. Uh, pressing this, you know, this button here enters into the model setup. Let's see, I, I want to tilt this so you can see that without it whiting out, but apparently it's not going to work. <laughs> there, that, there, I can see it that way. And you can switch between the different channels. and, and a diff or, Let me break out of this, actually hitting the return button here. Uh, this is your navigation button, the second one down here. Now this is the, one of the big cons that I got about this. That it takes a while to learn these buttons and what they do. This is forward, and then if you hold the button down, you can go back. If I remember correctly, yep, that takes you back. And the bottom one here takes you into the uh, specifics of each menu. Now, I'm not going to go over each and every one of these menus, other than you are going to need to learn OpenTX protocol. Um, it's there are lots of uh, videos on YouTube showing how to use OpenTX, so keep that in mind. It, it there is a learning curve to learn this transmitter and also to learn the OpenTX. Now, one other thing that this transmitter's got and that makes it um, pretty cool is the scroll wheel on this. Now, the scroll wheel enables you to select the different models that you want to fly right now you know I have a bunch of models set up and I'm going to show you I'm going to fly some of these today in the follow-on video of this but you can use this to select the different models that you would, would have set up before you go flying and ready to go like right now if I want to fly my F959 I just select that and hit select model and notice a little it even has little pictures you can put in there <laughs> your specific pictures for the different airplanes or drones that you want now one thing about this scroll wheel and i gotta alert you folks is the original version of this that i got and i guess they're redesigning it right now my scroll wheel broke okay there's a little pin up here that breaks very easily a little plastic pin uh fortunately um Jumper has a lot of the spare ones, and they sent me a spare one to put in here. It's only a few dollars, I guess, if you do have a problem. And it's actually easy to get to. You just open up the back uh, with multiple screws in the back here and uh, pop off the back, and then you can insert this uh, little scroll wheel in there. Not too difficult to change, but keep in mind the original release of this has a problem with the scroll wheel and that it can potentially break. Now, with that in mind, if you do have the original one of this, when you use this scroll wheel, never press down on the top. The selection button is behind the bottom part of the scroll wheel. So press on the bottom. Never press on the top, okay? So use press on the bottom to make your selection when using this scroll wheel. And that way you'll avoid breaking it because I was pressing down on the top and I pressed too hard and I broke that pin. <laughs> so keep that in mind, folks. Okay, so that's a T16. Very capable. More than I really would use or need 
for flying drones. But for those of you out there who fly airplanes also and need those extra switches for your landing gear or your flaps or whatever, you know, if you've got a bomb release or whatever, um, this would come in play. It's a very capable transmitter. I guess it's really meant to compete with the uh, T8S or with the Free Sky um, X9D Tyrannus. So this would be a good competitor to the Tyrannus. Let's put it that way, folks. So let's take this out and try it out and see how it performs. So hope you enjoy this flight. By the way, this is my Wakira Devo 10. I, I only got it here in the picture because it's it's also a multi-protocol transmitter. I got it set up with deviation software. It's also capable, but not as capable as this. So let's go for a flight and try it out. So hope you enjoy these flights. Good morning, Quadcopter 101. We're at it, one of my favorite flying fields. Let's give the T-16 a try here and see how it performs. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's try flying it with, uh, what is this one? This is one of my old ones. This is a XF100. Uh, it is FlySky 2A, FHDS 2A. So what I'm going to need to do is before I turn that on, I'm going to need to turn on my transmitter. Welcome to Jumper TX. Welcome to Jumper TX. And look for that FlySky model that I had set up. I've already previously set that one up. So I go to Model Select and look for FlySky. Let's see, FlySky Multi, the Multicopter, that'll be it. That'll be AFHSDA. AFH, <laughs> I forget the word. AFHS2A. <laughs> FlySky Protocol. Okay, we should be good there. Uh, might need to bind that. Hold on. Let's just, no, I don't need to find that. This should remember it. So, heading return coming out of these menus. And all I need to do now is make sure all my switches are down or up, throttle down, and plug in the battery to this little drone. Let's see if it'll fly it. Battery's plugged in. I think we are bound. Let me double check that. Yep, I hear the beeper. Um, and let's see, switching to armed, going into act or angle, we're going to fly an angle, and taking off. How's it fly with this thing? Flies very well with this thing. <laughs> Whoa. I forgot, this little thing's a screamer. What is the, this is the Aurora, I believe. I forgot the model of this. I forgot I had this actually. I found it in an old box, but I was looking for a fly sky, something to demonstrate fly sky with, and this is actually working. Now to fly this because it's such a big box, you know, people like this big controller. I have to pinch, <laughs> pinching to fly this, folks. Because uh, let's see if I can get used to flying it with just thumbs. Let's try just thumbing it. I can. Okay, I can thumb it. Let's bring it in close. Show it to you, and then we'll go on to the next aircraft. I just want to show that you can fly AFH DS-2A, yeah, disarming. And again, what is this model? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, XF-100. Was, was that Aurora models? I forgot. <laughs> People will chime in here. Let's put this back in my bag of quads and get at the next one. What do we got here? This is... My old uh, ViFly X150. If I remember, this thing was an awesome flyer. But this uses FreeSky D16. So we are going to need to switch. Switch the controller. By pressing down. Model select. And looking for my FreeSky setup, which I've done already. FreeSky D16. And selecting it. Select model. And we should be good there. So that's set. Switch is disarmed. And throttle down, turning on the quadcopter. And or make sure it's plugged in the right polarity. And this one's a little more powerful, so I'm gonna step back a bit. <laughs> Let me make sure it arms. Yep, there's the beeper. Okay, and arming. And take into the air. Oh yeah, flies this one well also. So yeah, the utility of these little um, multi-protocol transmitters, they're very useful, you know. Before, when I started off flying these drones, you had to buy a different controller, different uh, transmitter for every drone that you had just about practically bought. And this reduces that 
need to do such. Um, it's very handy to have such a multi protocol. In fact, I recommend all new flyers that are getting into FPV especially, consider getting a multi protocol uh, transmitter, folks. Uh, that way it won't limit you to what specific drones you can buy. You can get any drone that you want and just practically fly it. So let's bring this one in for a landing now. Can't tell the front from the back on this one. And I remember that. <laughs> that was the issue with this. There we go, disarming. Next one, uh, I'm just going to skip the next one. I think the next one's Free Sky D8, and I don't really need to demonstrate that, but I want to show one other thing that this can do, and that is fly some of these little toy drones. I got a little Seam X5C ready to go here. And let's see, I think I need to select Seam X5 protocol. Let's try that. And model select. And I have this, again, all set up. I've been trying to get the Bugs 3 to work with this. Uh, I get the motor started, but I can't get the throttle working yet. I will, I'll figure that out eventually, but let's select SEMA. I know SEMA works. So select model, and we should be good to go there. And plugging in a little SEMA X5C, like so. Turning on its the drone, flat surface. Up down and I think I need to bind it if I remember so selecting uh, SEMA and then I gotta go up uh, backwards to bind select bind select oh, turn <laughs> come on bind 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 okay we should be good there just need to do that there we go and let's try the CMAX 5C by the way, this is my original CMX 5C that I reviewed many years ago, five, six years ago. <laughs> Still original motors on this thing, believe it or not. Original motors, this has had hundreds, if not close to thousands of flights. <laughs> and it still runs great today. Original batteries. Surprising, huh? I am pitching still. It's just too big of a controller to hold with my fingertips and then use my, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just need to pinch this one for some reason. But even the CMX 5C flies with this, so just about anything that the 4-in-1 module covers can be flown with this. Um, I was going to fly my F959 and the XK800. Unfortunately, I crashed both of those recently. <laughs> They're kind of in pieces. I'm fixing them. They'll be flown again. But uh, that's it. So I just want to demonstrate the T16. Um, very useful, very capable transmitter. For those of you who are interested in uh, OpenTX version, this is Jumper TX, of, you know, the, uh, the fork of open TX, but it's very capable transmitter, I have to say. So, hope you enjoyed these flights, this is Quadcopter 101. Who is that? <laughs> the T16s. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also, make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So, give it a try, folks.